doing good man so you know we've been checking out your your music and wait so wait i'm sorry so it's jumping so i'm new to is, it jump, okay, is the screen it. jumping no it was like so it's two of y'all i didn't know like I'm yeah yeah yeah. there's two it. of us yeah there's two Got of you. us yeah yeah there's there's really three of us but she's she's uh, she has an important uh meeting today so she couldn't make it to the sk don't play uh but she you okay. know obviously she wants to be here uh but everything is good right now you can see us yeah, I just, I didn't know how Zoom worked. And so when you oh, was okay. talking, it's all you and then he was talking. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So, so I got to ask you a question. Is Jesse Powell your <laughs> uncle? <laughs> Not even. Because, be I young. mean, have you heard the resemblance of people mention Jesse Powell with your music? I get it all the time. All the time. <laughs> That's what's up. I hear That's it too, though. Up. Like certain, certain songs, like I, I hear it too. That's awesome, man. So. Memphis native. So are you from born in Memphis? You lived there your whole life. Talk to us a little bit about the culture, how it inspired your music. Yeah, born and raised in Memphis. Um, I recently just moved to Atlanta, but yeah, born and raised in Memphis. And I mean, as y'all know, Memphis is like really big uh, with its music and history. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's just growing up around a lot of talent, a lot of raw talent, um, you know, from the church. And you know, just even it's just the it's just an atmosphere for singers out there. Um, and yeah, just real soul. And I kind of just picked up on it. And you know, of course, yeah. So let me ask you this, Jay. Uh, you you are a singer, singer, in my opinion. Um, what does that who mean? Are, yeah, you know who who are your musical influences that you would say have inspired your career? You know, from the beginning to this day, right now. So from the beginning. Um, I was a huge, huge, huge Christian Aguilera fan. Um, you know, the growl, all of that, like I was just all in it. Um, and it kind of jumped. I ended up being like really big with Usher and then that kind of went and that's when I ended up falling in love with Beyonce. That's like one of my biggest influences to this day. Um, and Miguel, I'm a huge Miguel fan. But I'm kind of all over the place. I love Smokey Robinson. I kind of take from a lot of different artists. Um, you know, with certain cadences and delivery, I just kind of take from a lot of people. Okay. And I think you answered Junior's question, Jay, when he said a singer, singer, and you said, what does that mean? <laughs> I sort of think what he's saying is all of those cadences, and he could correct me if I'm wrong, the cadences that you hit in your music mm -hmm. and the way you sing those songs with such passion, it comes yeah. out so effortlessly. And Junior, you can exp expand on this you know, if, if I yeah. didn't say everything that you meant. No, I mean, I mean, we were discussing, you know, the album before the interview even took place. And I was like, uh -huh. you know, he is the singer singer. Like he's the kind of guy that you go to where you, you know, you're going to get a hot record. You know <laughs> that you're not cutting any corners when you go ahead and put out your music. Thank and you. that's kind of how I feel about the Red Room. Uh, first of all, what's happening in the mm -hmm. rare room? It's not like there's fires burning. There's, <laughs> fire, there's uh, all kind of stuff going on. What's what was the inspiration behind this album? So, first and foremost, let me say it took you know years to make it. Uh, at least a good almost three years to put that project together and you know get it where I wanted it. But I mean, it, it's just what you hear. Like it was a lot of heartbreak. Um, not a lot of heartbreak, but I, I basically, I went through a situation, you know, I was at a very vulnerable time in my life, broken, you can say, um, and I just channeled all the energy, you know, even like, you know, living in Memphis and my situation at the time, uh, my living situation and trying to just figure life out and trying to work, like I was working two jobs. It was just a lot of emotional distress I was in, I would say. And I kind of just channeled all that and put it into my music. And like, even I, I'm really big, I'm a writer. I wrote Red Room myself. Um, and so I kind of just take from like what's happening around me, whether it's my friends, like my parents or somebody are going through anything. Like I just kind of take and I just kind of put all that into the project. So the track Faithful, was that something 
that kind of that you reflected on just now that somebody that kind of like you know kind of tore your heart apart and was that about because unfaithful you're saying like i wish i wasn't faithful i want to cheat on you yeah. i, I want to do my own thing so you know it was very you know direct mm -hmm. to how you felt yeah and so i wasn't like literally talking about um like i wasn't saying like i wanted to i was tired of being faithful like i was in a relationship i wasn't in a relationship I was more so speaking of like sometimes you know how you could be you could just devote a lot of time and attention to someone um and i was more so coming from that aspect of it like i i wasn't in a relationship at the time um it was just i just felt like a person was not taking me how i need to be took like they were just taking me for granted uh basically and that's how this song kind of came about it was just more so like you know you don't know who the fuck i am type of record and <laughs> Talk yeah. that talk, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm trying to filter it as best as I could, but that's where it came from. I was just like, you know, like, you know, at the end of the day, like, I look at myself as a king and I know what I can bring to the table. I know what I have to offer. I know who I am. Well, I'm figuring out who I am. Um, and yeah, it was just, I was just at a point and I was like, you know, I'm tired of this shit. Like, I'm not just no average ass nigga, fire. Um, and yeah. <laughs> so let me ask you this uh, now. You said it took three years to make this album. Mm -hmm. What about the timing to make the acoustic version to the album, which is something Look. I have really never seen before, where someone uh, would make an album and replicate the album acoustic. I thought that yeah. was changing the game, actually, you know? Yeah. And it would have been longer. Um, so I, I pretty much did. I had started on it, like, right before quarantine. It was, like, literally, like, beginning of March when I started recording. Um, and I kind of knocked out a lot of that stuff like really quick. It would have been more, but you know, quarantine happened, studios were closing down. Like a lot of people were just like not doing anything. The guitar players I were using, they weren't able to work. So I had to kind of use what I had, which is the five songs I put out. But um, yeah, like I'm huge. I'm a huge like guitar lover. Uh, I love acoustics. I love just that raw sound. And I love to mm -hmm. showcase my voice more than anything. Um, and yeah, I just was like, I want to put out an acoustic ver version. Now, mm. now you mentioned the guitar. Now I, I've actually we do our research here and I did see you playing the piano on one of your Instagram <laughs> yeah. uh, pages there. I and that was it. like in a that was a couple of years ago and you were playing Lean on Me. So uh -huh. with the whole acoustic version, do you play any instruments at all? I know you mentioned guitar. No, I don't. I, I want to learn acoustic. I don't play the keyboard. I was just that was just a video. I was I can play. That's the only thing I can play is Lean on Me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I want to learn. I want to learn acoustic, um, and I'm still on learning. I just, you know, I gotta really just get in that mind frame. Where I'm gonna learn it. All you gotta do is just get the. If you have the guitar, go to YouTube and start from there, and you will literally learn the basics, and you'll be able to create your own music. Later. I tell people all the time because I, I mean, I love the piano, and I just started watching things on YouTube, and it took me uh -huh. just the very beginning to make my own kind of records and stuff, just by you know. YouTube yeah. has everything on it, you know? Okay. Yeah, you could definitely do it. You could definitely do, do you, it. Do uh, you, what you produce or? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm an artist myself. I'm an artist okay. myself, but you know, I kind of got into this other passion as an mm. independent artist of, you know, looking at other artists that I feel that deserve a lot of shine uh, yeah. for the, their accomplishments. So, you know, you're one of those artists that, that we you. definitely view, you know? So your song off of the mm -hmm. Red Room, I believe it is something about you. It's got like a million views on YouTube. Yeah, what we just you hit a million. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think it is about that Congrats. song? That's yeah. That that's making people. You know, is bringing them in. Well, what I'm learning because, like I said, so first let me go back. When I started making Red Room, the reason it, it took so long because, like, I, I doubted the music a lot. I'm like, you know, like this ain't it. This ain't that. Blah 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 blah. But um, it still blows my mind to this day, like how much people gravitate towards the music. But I think it's just heartbreak. Like we all, we all go through. We all have that one person in our life, um, and you know, we know, you know, we all got that toxic shit going on, and we, we can't leave it alone. And I think people, it's just real. It's just raw. It's right to the point. And I feel like music is kind of missing. A lot of music is missing it nowadays. You know, just being vulnerable, especially from a, a guy. You know what I'm saying? um so yes speaking of the speaking of being vulnerable what is it like as an artist uh are your dms popping are people trying to get <laughs> at you like what's your yeah. relationship situation right now with dealing with music 
Go on, Jay. You were talking that talk earlier. Huh? Go on, Jay. You were talking that talk earlier. Don't be shy now. <laughs> oh, look. I, yeah, I got shy. <laughs> but, uh, no, I mean, they definitely, you know, it's, it's some traffic. But um, the most thing, I don't know, like, it's overwhelming in a sense um, because a lot of people, like, I'm, I, I want to be personable with my fans and with my, you know, I, my audience. Uh, I like to connect with them. But, like, some stuff just be kind of overwhelming because, you know, you get all the stories about what they're going through, how this song may have saved them. You got people that are suicidal. Yeah. Like, it's a lot of things that, you know, have been uh, coming my way. And I'm just trying to, I don't know, like, find a balance of, like, what's too, what's too personal, like, what's too, I don't know. You're trying but, to take it all in. Yeah, like, and I'm super grateful, but some of it is a lot. And I'm a very, like, to myself, private person. Um, and, like, I wasn't, like, a social media guy. All of this pretty much just happened, like, within a year, like, putting the project out and trying to, you know, push everything. Yeah. So it's new, it's different, but nevertheless, I'm grateful for it. Now, quick question for you. Uh, my favorite track on Red Room is Talk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. I, I read an article with Medium.com. Um, where they actually just recently were saying that, um, I don't know if this was a, a comment here, where uh, you were mentioning rap needs R&B more than R&B needs rap. I never said that. Because <laughs> okay. okay. it was I, in that article, I mean. and I wanted to ask you about that to make sure if there was something you said or something the, the person in the article said, because it was, it was in quotations. So yeah. I just, I thought I would ask about that because I was like, that's interesting because I want to know if he said it or he didn't say it, but I'm glad you cleared yeah, that up. I definitely didn't say that. I don't even know what that means. Like, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I was like, I was like, please clear that up for me, Jay, because I, I really enjoy your music, and I want to know if it was something you said or it was something oh, no. else. In art. <laughs> Come on, man! It don't even sound like he would say something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even care about rap enough to comment on it. Like, that's clickbait, bro. That's that, all. <laughs> thank you so much for clearing that up for me. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, Absolutely, man. Yeah. So let me ask you this, man. Um, so it took you three years for that last project. What are you doing with this COVID-19 right now? Are mm -hmm. you creating more music? Are you kind of sitting back on this project? Like, where are you at musically right now? No, nah, I can't sit back. Uh, I've been creating, like, I legit was in the studio until, like, four this morning. Um, so I'm super tired. But, no, nah, I've been taking the time to just create. Uh, of course, it, it, I feel like it threw a lot of people off, a lot of creatives off, because, you know, he's just trying to get adjusted to, like, the new now and then stuff being closed. He's trying to figure out resources to get things done. But, um, no, nah, I've been creating a lot, a lot of writing. I have a lot of new records that I'm working on. I'm still not quite there, like, with the new album yet. I'm still just trying to figure out, like, where I want it to go. And also trying to top Red Room in my head, which... <laughs> Might be hard to do. <laughs> not, not yeah, with, with I don't know about I don't know about topping. I think that as an artist, whenever you put out any body of work, it's how you felt in that season and whatever the yeah. season is right now. And you're gonna you know you, you're gonna cook up something different. So it's never really quite the same, you know. Right, yeah. right. And with you mentioning that, with you taking the three years to you know complete the project, and I notice you write all of your music. So mm -hmm. what is the songwriting process like for you? Do you Get the music first where the beat is there and you're writing to the beat or you just pretty much write words and you put it to a beat. How does that whole process go for you? So I'm more of a, I like to be like with the producer or with the guitar player. Like I like to make a lot of things from scratch. So some stuff I might start off with just my vocals. Like when we were making love, I had that melody, the whole dun dun dun, baby when I pull up, dun dun dun. Like I legit did a voice memo, sent it to my producer, I'm like, I heard something saying dun dun dun. He was just like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but we ended up figuring it out. But I like to play from scratch. Uh, sometimes he may have like a track he may send me. I don't like tracks that are like heavily produced. Like, give me room to play with it and go where I want to go with it. I like to then delete the song. Um, but in this next go round, um, I'm using other writers, but when I'm writing on my own, I like to do demos. I'm a, I'm a big melody guy first, so I go in, I just sing melodies. I say whatever, it don't make sense, and I go back in and I just pin it in from there. Nice. That's what's up, man? Let me, go ahead, go ahead, friends. Oh, okay, I was just going to say, um, as, as far as, you know, to tie that in, I noticed that there's a lot of connection, you know, with, with your music, and I looked on, you know, seeing your Instagram, you're a really big family guy. I love that. And uh -huh, um, yeah. how has quarantine life been for you with the family? Uh, 
it hasn't been like well i'm not out here with a lot of family i don't have no family in georgia um okay but i still like i mean if i feel like seeing my family i just get on the road go see my family um my mom i'm going going to see my mom actually this weekend and she lives in florida um so yeah it hasn't really stopped much um more so just creatively it, that's the only thing they kind of hinder for me my favorite video is your video with your little cousin and she's trying you're, you're saying she's acting all grown oh yeah <laughs> she is she looks, she's worse now <laughs> i don't know her name but she she's she's Mallory. like that that video is priceless oh yeah now nah, she she's super grown now like that's awesome. crazy that's crazy so let me ask you this uh have you considered like as a writer submitting your music for like uh any kind of placements for commercials tv uh, -huh. uh like for example like nbc has a show songland where there's a few people that i know that i know personally that have gone on the show to present, mm -hmm. you know, original music where it gets picked up by an artist and they perform this, their songs. Like, have you branched out to writing for other people? I haven't got into that yet. Um, that's actually a conversation that I need to have with my team, um, but I haven't really gotten into that. I would love that. I don't know about somebody else singing mine, but you know, like maybe yeah. they could put it on, you know, include it in the show or something. It depends on the artist, let me say that. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, but. It's something that I would take interest in for sure. Oh, for sure, for sure. So, uh, are we going to get a performance? Any any kind of song? Are we going to do anything today? I mean, yeah, we can. I have my list set up because they told me I wanted a song. Acapella, song, acapella, but, uh, Jay, acapella. We slap <laughs> acapella. Yeah, it don't matter. Yeah, it's up to you. We're Just great. A little piece. What we doing? Just yeah. a little piece. Whatever Just you comfortable piece. with, bro. Okay. When you say you love me. Is it just to hold on to me? Don't say you love me, babe. Just to hold on to me. I had to let down these walls. Got my emotions involved. I couldn't color my flaws. That shit ain't easy at all. Ah, I forgot my note. I mean, my Woo! ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Howell in the, the building. Hey, Howell is in the building. Hey, man, we want to say, you know, thank you for coming on the show. We really appreciate your work. Uh, we're going to continue. I mean, you're family now. So whenever you drop anything, we're going to get put it on our story and stuff like that. So, you know, we really appreciate you. We're rooting for you big time, man. We are. We're hey, rooting for you big time. Make sure y'all send me uh, your Instagrams and all that type of stuff so I can make sure I follow and we will. Absolutely, man. And Absolutely. we're gonna send you the links to um, you know, when we're putting it up on YouTube. So you can go ahead and if you want to post it on your website or your pages, you can do that as well. We'll send you all that information. And we just thank you for your time, brother. We appreciate you. No and problem. We thank look you. Look forward to seeing you grow in your career and you're gonna do big things. Appreciate it. Thank y'all. Jay Howell in the building. Peace out. Jay Howell in the building. Peace. <laughs> All right. Have a good one. You too. Can't nobody complete it like you, baby. When you say you love me.